Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel Tech World with Rajendra. In this video, we are going to talk about a stack data structure. So first we'll understand what is meant by stack, what all the advantage uh, of this stack data structure, and then we will see practically how we can basically implement the stack in Python programming language, okay? So uh, the general idea of the stack is basically uh, will will basically we can have a multiple element, okay? But the important thing is, uh, it looks very much similar to the list data structure, linked list data structure that we have seen our in our earlier video, where uh, we can insert an element into the list at at anywhere, okay? Like let's say this is our linked list. So in a linked list, we can basically insert an element at any point, right? But in case of a stack, what happens is, uh, we'll have element to be added only at one end. Like let's say this is a first element we added. So on top of that, we keep adding the element, okay? So we'll just keep adding the element on top of this, something like this. And whenever we want to remove, so, last in first out okay it works on this strategy okay where whatever the last element got added that will be removed okay so this way one after another element will be added uh, sorry the one after another element will be removed so it's a kind of a last in first out okay lifo order we call it as so elements will be removed in last in first out order in the stack so now if you want to implement a stack what are the operation we need to understand? The first operation is basically we call it as a push operation. Okay. So let's say we create a stack. So what we need to do is let's say this is our stack. So this is the first element. So we use a push operation to uh, put that element into the stack. Okay. If you want to add another element, so on top of this, we add it something like this. Okay. Again, if you want to add it, again, we'll do the push operation, right? So like this, we'll keep adding it a next element, okay, which will be at the top. And then if you want to, the another operation that we have to do it on the stack is pop operation, okay? So in a pop operation, basically whatever the element which is at the top or the element which is added at the end, that will be popped out, okay? That will be popped out. So last in, first out. So this element came last, so that will be first popped out, right? But one important thing that we need to do it in the pop operation is we need to check if your uh, stack is empty or not, okay? Like if you try to pop an element of an empty stack, we should provide a message saying that, okay, this stack is empty, okay? So that's what uh, we need to basically in a pop operation, we have to check if the stack is empty or not. If it is not, just go ahead and pop out that element. If it is empty, just provide a message saying that, okay, this stack is empty. You're trying to pop an element from an empty stack, okay? And another operation we want to see is basically the display operation, okay? If you want to see how your stack looks like, what all elements are there, then we are going to see the display, okay? We are going to see the display operation. So these are the three operations we will see, and we will implement this stack by using uh, similar to a linked list, right? So in our earlier video, we saw the linked list. So in a similar mechanism, we will basically uh, implement the stack data structure, but with the features of stack, like, okay, we can push or pop element from the one end of the data structures only. Okay, so we will see this practically. Uh, but before that, uh, I want to add one important thing is where this uh, stack data structure would be used. So the first uh, important usage of a stack is basically to uh, evaluate an expression, right? So we have a lot of different types of mathematical expression we have seen, right? So, and a lot of uh, different types of braces or brackets we have seen in the mathematical expression. So with the help of stack, we can basically like, okay, if any curly bracket is opening or a function bracket is opening, we can just put it in a stack and do the operation. Okay, we can keep adding all the element until we get the closing operation. Okay, so as soon as we get the closing operation, we can pop out all the element and do the operation, right? So in the evaluation, I mean, uh, expression evaluation, we can use a stack data structure. 
Another important use case is basically the function calls, right? In a programming languages, we uh, basically call multiple function, right? So when we call that function, we need to make sure we store all that function related information. And then we uh, create, we can create a stack and we can put all the information about that particular function, okay? And then whenever function execution is done, we can basically remove that uh, details that we stored in the stack and then continue from where we left for the function call, right? So there are a lot of such uh, use cases available for a data structure. But yeah, uh, we just discussed it. Let's uh, see and how uh, how we can implement the stack practically. Okay, so let me go to the editor. So we are basically going to use a linked list data structure. So what we can do is <clears throat> let's create a st uh, stack, uh, basically a node object. So how we can do that? We can create a class for a node. Okay, now when we say, uh, when we are adding a data into the stack, so now the data can be anything. Okay, so let's say my data is of type node. Okay, and uh, let me add a constructor for this tape init underscore underscore. And here I have a self. Okay, and then we can have a self dot a data. Okay, so initially it would be none and then self dot next. Okay, so this basically to represent the next element of the that stack. Okay, so this is how your node will look like. Now let's create a stack. So how to create a stack class stack. Okay, now let's initialize and in constructor here in it where we'll have a self and then we'll have a kind of a, uh, again, uh, again here we'll have basically the top of the stack. So what we are going to do is self dot top. Okay, initially it would be done. And I'm adding one more element just to basically track the size of the stack. Okay, it should be initially zero. Okay, now, Let's write the operation. So the first operation that we are going to provide is push operation. So let me add a function def push where we'll get the uh, data as an input, okay? Now, if the stack is empty, so first thing that we need to do is let's create a, a node object, which is something like this, we can do it. And let me pass the data. Okay, so basically, let me add this here. So we have to initialize it with the data, right? So I'm adding it as a data here. Now, node is initialized. What I'm going to do is if top is, is equal to equal to none. Okay, so if there is nothing in a stack, okay, if there is a nothing or even now we are maintaining a size, right? So what we can do is the easiest option is basically if self dot size equal to equal to zero, okay? There is nothing. What we can do is simply, uh, what we have to do is self dot top is equal to node. That's it, okay? Self dot top is equal to node because our uh, stack is empty. So we are adding a self dot top is equal to node. That's it. We don't need to do anything, right? But if it is not empty, okay, if your stack is not empty, what we need to do is we need to add that this particular node and on top of it. So how we are going to do is how we are going to do is self dot, uh, sorry, the node, node of next is equal to a self dot top. And then we can just do self dot top is equal to no. That's it. So what we are doing is kind of, uh, I'll just show you with a whiteboard. So let's say uh, this node is already there. Okay, this node, maybe let's say a uh, couple of nodes are already there, right? Now your top is pointing here. Now you have this node, you want to basically add on top of this. So what we are doing is this node of next, 
okay node of next we are pointing as a top so that means we are pointing something like this and then the next operation we are doing is self dot top top is equal to no so that means stop now instead of pointing to this it will point here okay so that's what we are doing it here so let's get back node of next is equal to self dot top and self dot top is equal to no that's it now so now this now our node will be added at the top so this is how we are going to do a push operation that's it how that's how simple it is because we just wanted to have our stop at always at the top of okay the first element so that we can access it so this is how we can do the push operation now let me add a pop operation okay so pop now pop is basically to remove the element so self pom yeah for a pop uh, we don't need to mention anything as such but here what we need to do is if okay one more important thing i forgot to add is here as we are adding a node so what we are adding an element so what we need to do is self dot size plus equal to one so we have to increase it okay that's what i'm doing it okay so now in the pop let's check the size first if uh self dot okay size is equal to equal to zero okay, we can provide a message print uh stack is empty okay now it's better to have a separate function for that because that's how the usually we do it the def is empty and here i'm doing a self and here simply we can just do return um, uh, return self dot size uh, not equal to zero okay so that means size zero not equal to zero uh, so basically what we want is self uh, if is empty is true or not self size is equal to zero okay so if size is zero it will return true so what will happen if here i can call that function if uh is empty okay if is empty i can just call this function with self as well self dot is empty so if it is true okay we are just giving a message stack is empty okay uh, otherwise if it is not empty we have to parse and print it okay so what we can do is i can just do current node is equal to self dot top and then what we are we can just simply do while current we can just print uh self dot sorry the current dot data and then i want it to end with arrows so this will show us properly and the next is current is equal to current dot next okay just to go to the next element okay and then i'm just adding one print statement just to make sure uh, we go to the new line okay that's it and one more thing is yeah this is a wait uh this is a pop operation right this is not a display operation so sorry my bad so for a pop operation what we can do is just simply what we need to do is uh we have to remove the top element right so how we can do that self uh we can just create a node is equal to current node is equal to self dot top and then um, to remove it what we can do is um, self dot top okay is equal to uh current next okay current top next why we are doing it because now instead of pointing okay if you want to remove this element now if your top is here we are just saying that uh we are assigning this current as well here and we, what we are doing is uh self dot top is equal to current top next that means this element so our top will point here and this node will be automatically removed okay so that's what we are trying to do it here self dot top is equal to current dot next that's it and we also need to do self dot size 
minus equal to one. Okay, just to reduce it. So that's how simply it will remove the top element. Okay, and let me add the display part here. So diff display, you want to display the stack. So in the display, we have to do the same thing again. So here I'm just checking uh, cell P is empty, stack is empty. Otherwise, if it is not empty, okay, we are assigning the current cell dot top and then one after another, we are just printing it, that's it. Okay, so that's how will our uh, stack implementation will look like. Okay, let's quickly see whether that's are working or not. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll use one for loop for X in range maybe 10. Okay, and then what we can do is, I can just do stack is equal to stack. And then here I can just do stack dot push. This will push the element X. Okay. And then once for loop is done, wait, I think this, yeah. So once uh, for loop is done, I can just go and uh, stack dot display. Okay, stack dot display. I'm going to display all the stack. Okay, and then let me just quickly do a pop as well. So for popping, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'll pop only five element. Okay, how I'm going to do is stack Y in range, maybe five. And then here I'll do stack dot pop. Okay, now for popping, we are not passing anything. Okay, so stack dot display okay so here you can see we are adding 0 to 9 number so 9 would be the last element that is getting added and if we are removing 5 means 9 8 7 6 5 this 5 element should be removed okay so let's see whether that's happening okay if you are done everything is correct we should see that message so let's see oh wait uh, what i missed sorry it should be a dot not the arrow uh, where is this line number 14 dot here i've used a dot here i have used dot yes sir here i should have used no dot next okay not the arrow so let me run it oh wait now it's giving a stack is empty for all let me just quickly verify it so stack dot push x in a push what is happening we got the data we got it initialized self dot size is equal to equal to zero initially it should be zero so we should have self dot top is equal to node so that's perfectly fine next time when it gets called self dot size oh sorry here i should have done the self dot size plus equal to one okay that's what we forgot because we here also we are adding a node right perfect so now let's go and run it Right, so here you can see, uh, maybe I can do one more thing, print. After push, okay, so that we can easily understood, right, which one is this up. Okay, and let me here add after pop, print. After pop. Okay, so now let me run it. Right. So it's it's basically that function is not returning anything. That's why we got it none. And that should be perfectly fine. Okay, because uh, whatever is happening, it's happening inside that only. Okay, not uh, inside display function, we are only doing print, right? So that's the reason we are getting in none here. That's okay. Now you can see here in the push, we are pushing it from zero to nine. So you can see. First got zero, then on top of that, all element got added zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then in the pop, we are uh, removing five elements. So only top five elements got added nine, eight, seven, six, five. This five elements got removed. Okay. And then we have printed. So this is the remaining stack we have. Okay. So that's how simply basically we can implement a stack using a linked list. And uh, it is very useful data structure for doing a lot of evaluation expression, function calls, syntax check, okay? It is useful in a lot of fields, okay? 
So that's it for this video. I hope uh, everyone understood the stack data structure. If you have any query, please uh, do write it in a comment box. I'll definitely try to answer it. And if you want to learn any new topic, that also please let me know. I'll create a video around it. So if you like the videos, please uh, like, subscribe, and share with your circle. So that's it for this video. Thanks, everyone.